It's Wednesday. It's three o'clock. Time for another mystery model on Monster Hobby's What's in the Box. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello again, Monster Hobbies fans. Welcome to another Monster Hobbies After Hours video. And today we're gonna look at the mysterious unboxing video for Monster Hobbies What's in the Box Mystery Edition. Actually, I'm thinking of changing the title of this series because I think I should actually go back to showing people the box and the regular steps and this series can actually become its own video line called Guess the Model or Mystery Model or something. I'll think of it for next week. But this week I'm in a bit of a rush, video speaking, just the way things kind of work. So we'll just roll with the regular pattern. But again, remember, this is a mystery model and we don't want anyone to know what's in the box until the very end of the video. So my good Monster Hobbies fans, model kit builders, if you can figure this thing out, please remember not to let any of the other guests on the page know what's in the box. Remember, this is a mystery. All you can do is say, I found it at 0 0.076 or whenever you find out what's in the box. And now without further ado, let's go down and see what mystery I brought for you today. Now, tonight's model kit will really leave you guessing because this is one of those ones you can build multiple ways. So, this will be a real challenge. And our first part coming up here is the windshield glass and headlights. As you can see, there's two fairly large headlights. The detail is really nice. It's got that grid pattern on there. Actually, they're vertical lines straight up and down. Then we have a very telltale double pane of glass. If you think you know what this kit is, please leave the time in the comments below. Now we'll get on to our next piece. Now the next piece we're going to look at is a sprue that contains the engine and this interesting panel here. Now, as we move our engine block closer, you will notice that this can only be one thing, a Ford 427. And the detail on it is a little soft on the nameplates. Doesn't have that nice crisp Ford emblem in there, but it's not a bad engine. In fact, I kind of like it. <laughs> it's got molded in headers here with some hole detail on the back. Now, come on guys, you should know this thing by now. I'm going to keep this nameplate here covered as I turn this over, because that will give away some of it. This little back deck here, very simplistic. You have to remove these mold marks here, just to make it sit flat. But there's a telltale type of steering wheel, inverted. Many of you Guys that built custom cars in the 70s might recognize this. And there's a cross brace for holding the engine. Should go somewhere here on the back of the transmission. And uh, your belt and many other good goodies. So let's move this out of the way and get to our next bunch of pieces. What's in the box? What could it be? <laughs> And next up on Gray's Anatomy, or the Gray Parts, we have part number 20. If you recognize part number 20, you are quite an amazing model builder. 
But this is the frame of the model kit. And as you can see, it's got a serious Z chop to it. In fact, it really looks like the letter Z, which would be great for Sesame Street fans because today's model kit is brought to you by the letter Z. Ha ha ha. Anyway, do you think you know what this is? There's the mounts for the engine there. And this would be for the front axle. So you already know the kind of car that would mount an axle like this in that particular way. But can you, can you, can you, can you figure out what the mystery model is? Now let's look at our next components. It was the eye, the eye that kept winking and blinking. <laughs> well, 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 what do we have here? More gray components. This time you may be getting a little closer on your guessing. Look at this nice tuck and roll back panel here with the two oval windows. And on the back we have some mold marks that need to be taken out. I'd like to take these out with a number 16 hobby blade. If you haven't got one, make sure you go and check it out at Monster Hobbies, where we have a nice selection of replacement blades. Moving along, we have this, which I believe is a floor pan. I can feel I can feel sort of a a carpet texture on here. <laughs> and then we have the front seat bottom. And again, nice tuck and roll in here. And a firewall. Now this is a typical type of firewall from certain vintage of car. And if you haven't guessed by now, this is a car kit. Here's the front interior panel. You can see a little light, light bit of wood grain right in there, which is popular back in the day. And then we have these kind of instrument panels, which almost look like they came off of some kind of Ford product. Very light on the uh, transmission and the gas pedal, automatic transmission pedal. And it's got a little bit of that simulated carpet right there. Now you may think you know the kit now, but are you right or are you wrong? Continuing the Grey's Anatomy, <laughs> we have our next components. And some of you are now saying, aha, I know what the kit is. But really, do you? Do you? Because you will find something quite unexpected coming up next. But for now, there's some nice side panels for the body of our car. And here's some nice oval end pieces. And this is a control unit for a certain thing, which will become apparent a little later in the video. On the back, we can see some mold marks. And it's kind of a shame because this has a texture to it, which is probably some kind of pleating on the real car. And it's carried in on the inside of the roof. But the top of the roof, where the paint matters, where people are going to see it, is actually nice and smooth. The detail is a bit light. But that is basically that piece. And now let me throw a wrench into your thinking. Now what do I mean by saying throwing a wrench into your thinking? This was also included in the kit. And again, we've got the side panels of our car here. These are separate and we'll flip around to form a box. We have these big girder plates, as well as this two-piece tank arrangement. And again, we've got that nice texture on the inside, but unfortunately we've got those big sink mold marks. Now these marks actually may trick you off as to the manufacturer, because this company was noted for some really heavy, bad mold marks, as well as flash. It's interesting that this kit actually carries on that tradition, as it were. And the back of our steel panels here also have little sink mark holes. Your round files and flat sandpapers should be able to take those ones up. These ones you will need to use some filler. What's in the box? I hate it when it goes out of focus. All right, so that threw a wrench into your what's in the box thinking here. Now you must think outside the box. 
<laughs> What's in the box? What could it be? <laughs> and now we get back into another. Another sprue for you. Sprue for you. And here we have what appears to be two halves of a tank, as well as a bunch of flat pieces. That's the piece that would hold the tank into the frame. Oh no, that is the top of the tank. And it's got that waffle pattern, so you could walk on the top of it, sort of thing. Then we have this, which again has that texture. So that's part of the, the car body. There's some nice raised bits. If you're good at pinstriping, you can pinstripe around those. And yeah, very unique. These would be the sides, I guess, to hold the tank on. And again, we've got those mold marks. Number 16, a hobby blade. Should be able to take those and get rid of them. So now let's look at the next component, which will throw you off again. And here we have the next component on the gray parts tree. And as I said, this should be throwing you off. You now know that there are two options here in this model, but still, what is the model? Because remember, even though these are two options, it's only one kit. So here we have this really weird shaped thing. And it's got a gear type of arrangement on one end, which might be a telltale sign. The telltale sign! <laughs> okay, and then we have this cone half of a cone and another one of these control box things and a flat panel and then that type of kicked roof the Z kind of roof and then this piece and I'm not sure what that piece is but it's something interesting so now you've got two mysteries to solve but there's only one answer Watson what would it be well, let's move these parts out of the way and look at some of our chrome pieces. All right, now we're moving into the chrome parts. And not only is there one chrome sprue, there is not two chrome sprues, but there are five chrome sprues. Yes, that's right. And here's our first one coming right up into the lens. And it is a series of rods and radius rods, as well as some kind of headlight arrangement and some other weird components. What could it be that's hiding in here for me? What is in the box? All right, not too much to be said on that. So let's look at the next chrome tree. And here it is. What do we have here? We've got the grill and the headlights, as well as the bottom of the transmission pan, the intake, and some of the blower components. Here we've got this nice, nice radiator cap topper, and a big gear shift that would make Ed Roth happy, but this is not an Ed Roth kit. Ha ha ha! I didn't give away a clue there. And here are some big exhaust manifolds that just pour right out of the side of the engine. So now let's take a look at the third chrome tree. This chrome tree will really leave you guessing, or maybe not, but here we have a lot of support frame members with lightweight holes drilled through them. And we've got our brakes here. These are disc brakes, tiny ones. You can see a lot of mold marks on the back of the chrome, which is unfortunate, but this is one of those situations where you could strip the chrome, sand off all these mold buttons, and then spray paint it with like elk clad chrome paint. Or you could leave the buttons on if you're not quite a professional modeler. Or if you just want to build this to display, you can leave those buttons on and leave the chrome nice. However, that is our third chrome tree. And I said there was five, so let's go see the other two. 
What's in the box? Now we have our fourth chrome tree entering the picture here. And as you can see, we've got two really big differentials. So that is another clue of this model. And look, we have six wheels. So this monster is a six wheeler. There's our blower intake manifolds, blower scoop. Those are the sides of the blower. Put them together and you get one blower. There's a dropped axle right here, and it is really dropped considering the V or the Z framing. Well, these are shock absorbers going up there. Then we have various rods and tie rods and differential axles and all the rest of the car goodies. And now, if you flip it over, notice a couple little mold marks. That one might be problematic when it goes up into the frame. Perhaps not. Maybe some of you guys with some experience can leave a comment down below as to how to get rid of some of these off the chrome. Now let's move on to our final chrome tree. And once again, this is our final chrome tree. It's a smaller one again, but this has some really interesting parts here. What could these be? There's the windshield frame and a couple of the little wheels for those instruments that I mentioned before, a tap, and some buttons. What's in the box? I do believe these go on top of the tank, if that's any indication. And as we turn this over, we'll see a few more mold buttons that should come off. And you know, when I clip the chrome off the trees, wherever it came off, I try to file that flat or use my hobby knife, and then I add a bit of Tester's Silver to the spots where it came out. Monster Hobbies does carry paint, although we cannot ship that worldwide because it's listed as hazardous material, because it's flammable. And if it gets crushed in a box, it will leak everywhere. So that's our thing about that. So you have to come in to our store in person to get the chrome. Anyway, let's move on. And now we have another tiny piece. These are tail lamps and red lights. I told you it was tiny. <laughs> They're nice little circles. They have no detail. You just clip them out. Scrape the chrome around the bezels where the lights go in so that you get that nice plastic on plastic contact. Use a bit of Tester's Liquid Cement or Citadel Liquid Glue, which I have in stock and just tap it around the edges and these will glue in nicely. So let's move these out of the way. Next up we have these two metal rods. Now this might give away the manufacturer. These are little metal rods that are used as the axles for our model. They would be the rear axles. We have the two and remember the dropped axle from before in the front. What's in the box? Next up are the front tires, and these are nice little Goodyear tires. They are GT, oh no, they are Rally GT tires. These ones are always a favorite of mine on some of the kits. I have seen them on a Corvair model, although this is by no means a Corvair model. Try to guess what it is, I hope you know. Finally, at the back, we have these four Goodyear slicks, and these guys are really wide and really nice. And they would go it's in, the box. in an arrangement like this in the back of this truck. So, yes. See if you can guess it, if you haven't already. Now we get into the part that all of you want to see, the instruction sheet. And here at one time it says special anodizing gold paint. So there was a little bit of clear gold acrylic paint in this model. Well, previous models, because this model didn't have it. But you paint over the chrome and it ends up looking like gold. 
which was a cool effect. There are some paints I have here that can duplicate that. Okay, there's the front wheel and tires going together and the rear wheel and tires. Then we have our big 427 Ford motor here going together. It says use cement and paint for styrene plastic. Monster Hobbies definitely has those on the shelf. Now, hopefully I did not give too much away. We have our engine here. The second part with all those blowers and pulleys going on. The chrome detail. There's a little magneto on here too. A lot of good detail on this even though the mold is a bit soft. Now, this will narrow it out a little bit. You notice that they only have one cab here and not the other. So now you can see where these components go. And that is the bottom of the carpet. Then we pull back a bit. We get our big chassis engine drop here, which of course shows all the components, including that dropped axle, the disc brakes in the front, and those big, huge frame rails with the holes in them. And now, there we go. Getting this pretty smooth with keeping the mystery going. There's our car going together more, and now we've got our dual rear axles and those center radius rods and rear radius rods going in there. We move over this way and it shows the fuel tank going together with those tops, the chrome tops. There's the panel with all the little wheels and the nozzle to get your gas or oil out of there. And then we come over here to the final assembly where we can now see the wheels and tires going on, the radiator dropping in, and the rods for going up to the cab, or the steering rod even. And then the decal placement. And I think you guys pretty much know what this one is now. So it's safe to turn it over and show you that it is the little gasser, or the little gasser. So now, let's take a look at the decals. And here comes the water slide transfers. Because I know there's a controversy between decal and decal. So I should remember to say a water slide transfer. It is less offensive, <laughs> anyway. Okay, so there's these silver pinstripes going around and on the roof. And of course it says little gasser. And possibly inflammable. Caution no smoking signs high octane, and nitromethane. And where can these decals go? Well, let's take water slide transfers. Well, let's take a look at the top of the box and the box art. And now for the crowning moment, here is the box art of our little gasser custom show rod, getting the nice glare from our fluorescent overhead bulbs. Blah. There it is, the buyer's choice one from RC2. Now this was a model that I got a long time ago. I'm not sure if round two has brought it out. As you can see there's a few pictures on the side of the box and of course it's skill level two which is great for ages 10 and up. Has glue and requires paint. Doesn't have glue, needs glue. Whereas the other levels of course have different requirements. So the box has a little gasser on the back here with the barcode, in case you need to scan it. And it says, detailed blown engine, slicks included, custom design decals. It said it. It said it. I did not. <laughs> and then, of course, it shows the back view, just so you know where the decal placement goes. And again, the top art box, again, on the side. And so, there you have it our model review for this week. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of Monster Hobbies What's in the Box, where we got to look at AMT's Lil Gasser, the buyer's choice version of the Lil Gasser. <laughs> Lil. Anyway, you may say to yourself, now wait a minute, Trevor, what were all those strange parts that were in that kit? Like the Z'd up roof and the weird barrel shaped thing and the little top. Well, the funny part about this is, when RC2 bought AMT, they shipped all the metal molds out to China. 
I do believe originally they were in Mexico, but I'm not sure. But they shipped all the molds out to China. And when they got onto the Chinese factories, AMT went down there and they told the people in charge to clean up all the metal molds and remove any blemishes in the molds. So, of course, the Chinese workers complied with this to the letter. What happens is, in the history of when they build model kits, sometimes they will make a big metal mold and they'll etch out all the parts and components, right? Then if they ever change the model, like say they don't want this to be a tank anymore and they want something different, they will block off in the mold all the channels where the plastic would go in to fill this up. And then over off on a different side of the mold, they'll make up the new parts. So what you saw there were the components for Lil Gasser. And the reason why they were there is because when the Chinese cleaned up the molds, they took their die grinders and ground off all the welds that blocked up the channels from this kit to the new part. So the plastic went through all this and it went through the new part. And then of course, the workers just snipped off the pieces from the parts tree, threw everything in the boxes for the RC2 kits, and wrapped it all up and shipped it back to the USA and Canada and, and the world and sold them. So when you find these old RC2 kits, you find a plethora of parts and the best one to find for the best value at the time was the AMT 1929 Ford because the second part, the original model, actually was a double kit from AMT. It included all the parts to build the 29 Ford and in the other side it had all the parts to build the a la carte by George Barris. And when that one went to China, they drilled out all those holes so you get two models in one box. So if you can find the AMT MPC version of the 29 Ford from RC2, you have hit the jackpot. And now that concludes that portion of what's in the box. And if you enjoy these videos, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to visit us on Patreon and the link is down below. And until next time, you gotta guess what's gonna be in the box. What's in the box?